Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today we want to talk once more about navigation in Flutter and we want to work today with named routing parameters. So how can we create a map with different routes with a string to a function pair so that we don't have to use always the material page route like we did the last time. And now without further ado, let's get started. First of all, before we begin, as always, you find all the source code inside of GitHub. And if you see the project will be navigation tutorial, you find the link down in the description. Everything that I will do here is separated into different branches. So you will see that we have one branch called boilerplate where you can following along and the other branch will be final where you can see all the stuff that we have done in the end. Okay, okay. so after we have set up the GitHub repository and you can follow me along, now we want to talk about the different options that we have with named operations of routing. So today I will show you the static navigation with routes that I would recommend you if you have something like provider package or block pattern, because then you don't have to pass information from one view to another view with the routing. And if you are interested, I can also make the dynamic routing where we have the ungenerated routes where we also have the op uh, opportunities to send um, arguments from one screen to another. So what the material app delivers us is one of the information that calls routes. And if you take a look, it is a constant of a map that is a string to widget builder. And the benefit of that is we can set up different routes for our different web views, but it is quite static because they only contains a context and we create out of that a different screen. But what will it help us with? The thing is, if we take a look into our first approach of making a navigation, you can see down here that we have a navigator.push sending the context inside and we have always to create this whole material page route. But it is always the same for each screen, so it makes not so much sense to recreate this line all over again. It would be maybe much better if we can have just here a string, like for example, go to lobby and that's it. We don't need more for that. How can we achieve this? So we have to register to our material app the routes that are existent for this project. So for example, if I go to my main.dart, I can say here, please give me the different routes with a map, as you can see here on the right side, with a map from a string to a function that has a parameter build context and returns a widget. So if I use that routes and I just create a map, we want to have different strings here. So for example, lobby. And lobby returns us a function with the new screen that we want to display. So for example, the login screen uh, with the new widget that we want to display. So for example, the log lobby screen. And it fails now because we get the context and we can't miss it. So with that, you can see there are some errors down here. Error, the argument string can't be passed to the parameter type route object that comes from here. Because what we have to do instead of saying navigator.push, we have to say push named. And as you can see here, we have three parameters. That is once the context, the route name, and the last thing are the arguments. And as I said already, the arguments we will not take care of in this tutorial. So we will make push named and as you see, everything getting green already. And if I press now the login button, most likely we will get even redirected. The error is based on Google fonts, so don't worry about that today. So we can really navigate now with that name. So we have just a string here. The problem with strings is they are not really bulletproof, right? So another developer comes, changes the name of this route and voila, we have a broken uh, application in some parts. So if you have a very big application where you route from A to B to C and back to A, it could be very difficult to, to um, keep track of the different names of these routes. And if you change one, you could break maybe a route somewhere completely else. So to make that a bit more future proof, we want to have here not a string, we want to have that the compiler helps us. So whenever we make an error in naming, the compiler will help us here. For that, we can go to the lobby screen. And one of the options that I always recommend is to create here a static string that we can call route, for example, and give it the name of the route. 
for example, lobby. And the benefit of this static is that we don't have to create an instance of this object. We can just use the object reference. And now if I'm going back to the main, we can replace this string here with the lobby screen dot route. And this helps us now because this here, if I make here a writing error, it's getting read and everyone knows about it. And the compiler can help me here, or better, the dev tools can help me here to create the right routes. If I go back to the login screen, we can do the same thing for here. We can just take the lobby screen and say dot route. And now I have made safe that when the lobby screen's name change from lobby to um, lobby new, then everything else will still work exactly the same way. There is no problem with that. But what I already said is this is a static route. You can see it. It is just a map where we have the context that we create the different screens for that. Okay, now let us create also for the game screen and the login screen these routes so that we can use them everywhere. all the routes and also the button clicks to the different routes and to our system. So you can see now we have here lobby screen, login screen and game screen. But we are still using this home and home creates us an instance of the widget. But what we also actually want is just to add here a route and he should or the router should understand which way we want to go. So for that we have to say uh, initial route and we have to pass by a string. So we can here say login screen dot route. And with that, the first time it will fail with this slash problem, because usually you should have a route that starts with a slash. That is your home uh, or main uh, routing that you have. But if you restart the application, you will see that error should be gone because none of our routes has a slash in front of the string. So if you would add to one of these here a slash in front of it, it could be that you lead to a problem here and it's getting an error. If you have a slash in front of a named parameter, you have to add at least one um, main route. So that means just adding a string with a slash and give it a command where it should go. But we don't want that for us now. It is perfectly fine that we have the login screen route and we don't want to um, manage anything else. So with that, we have passed by a, a mapping and this map returns us the correct route. The only thing is what will happen after a while if we have a lot of screens, if we have a lot of pushes that we can do, we get a very messy material app, right? So what I would always recommend is to take out this map and make here in the routes or create a routes file inside of your lib. And here you can add like get routes function. And this get routes function actually just returns this map. And now you have the benefit that the dependencies are living completely in this um, router file. And you can just say, please execute this and import the library here. And you can see if you take a look up here, you get rid of a lot of dependencies inside of your main dart file. If everything works well and we haven't done nothing wrong, you can see we can still navigate as nothing happened. And also that back to login screen works exactly the same way because we use pop until at this place. So with that we have managed to take out the routes into a separated place. We are able to navigate on the right side, you have seen it. And also we are able to have a bulletproof navigation system. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching me today. If you have any feedback, I would be happy if you leave it down in the comments. As you can see, I work today with the Mac OS uh, implementation on the desktop. So that's why the Google Fonts error come up because it is not supported by Mac OS, I think, or I have to add some internet access for it. But as you can see, it is very fast and reliable. Now, my question to you is, do you like it more inside of an emulator or simulator or would it be preferable to have it on a Mac OS? Please let me that know in the comments below. Cool. So there is nothing else to say. Leave a like and see you the next time. See ya guys.